In fact, we are one minute behind schedule. Praise the Lord. Let's be rounding up. Let's be rounding up. Praise the Lord. Please, let's round up. Let's round up. We are behind schedule. Let's round up, please. Let's round up. I feel like singing a song, but it's Yoruba song. Most of us won't understand it. We are sorry, but I, I will still sing it. He will sing to interpret. If you've been to Orthodox churches, Orthodox children's church, you will understand the song. Sunday school, me move fair on Lati law. Sunday school, me move fair on Lati law. Lati go echo, DJ Suolu Gala. Christ my Savior. Yes. I don't know the English, but I went to the call you. Sunday school, me move fair or Latin. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Sunday school is where I love to go. Yes, sir. To learn the lesson of Jesus Christ my Savior. Sunday school is where I love to go to be with him. That's why we need to have some. Thank you, sir. So, I think we've enjoyed our our time there. And um, before we go into discussion, the last thing we, I pointed out in our class, I want to point it out to us, then talk about it shortly, then we move into discussion. Um, Brosini, please, can you help us um, project Isaiah? Isaiah chapter 2, from verse 3. Isaiah chapter 2, from verse 3. Oh, uh, no, 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 sorry. Don't project it. Don't project it. Please, let's open our Bibles to Isaiah chapter 2, verse 3. Everybody, don't project it, please. Isaiah 2, verse 3. Let's open it. People in my class will know what I'm about to say. They have the origin. Okay. Pastor Timipa. No. No expo. <laughs> anyway, are we open to Isaiah chapter 2 from 3? Okay. I will read. People from many nations will come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of Jacob's God. There he will teach us his ways, and we walk in his path. For the Lord's teaching will go out from Zion. His word will go out from Jerusalem. The Lord will mediate between peoples, and will settle dispute between strong nations far away. He will hammer their sword into plowshare, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nations will no longer fight against nations, nor train for war anymore. Is that correct? Yeah? Beautiful. I've just read from Micah chapter 4. Micah chapter 4. So, we can see, this is not the first time we are seeing this. Am I right? Hello? This is not the first time we are seeing this kind of thing in the Bible. And um, like um, Pastor Fumi rightly pointed out to us in our class, when God uh, repeats such things, exactly the same thing word for word, some scholars are saying that Micah copy from Isaiah, did Isaiah copy from Micah, or they copy from different sources, or God spoke to them separately. Well, that's for them to debate. But I know 
God can do that. It's possible for God to speak to two different people with exactly the same thing. So I'm not worried about the scholars. It's what I learned from him that matters to me the most. So it's, God is saying it's important enough to repeat it to us twice so that we won't forget it, so that people will know. As I was saying it in the city, this guy was saying it in the villages and our, to people, you know, two different sets of people, so that everybody will be aware. Whether you are in the palaces or you are in the village or you are not, you don't have the privilege to, 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 to attend some gatherings. At least one way or the other, you, you will hear it. We should also know that. Then two, we know that um, Isaiah and um, Micah, they, they prophesied exactly around the same time. So God can speak to a nation or nations via different channel, the same message, the same message. So those are the things I think we need to just put in mind. Now, the floor is open. If you are in Sister Moyo's class, that class, I was talking to Pastor Rutimi that the pastor should consider splitting that class. That class is too large for me. And I told him I was jealous. He said, ah, they, are, they have almost half of the church population. Why now? So, <laughs> ah, ah. Anyway, they have, they have children, they have adolescents, they have young adults, they have, there is no older adult. There is no, and all, all age groups. It's okay. It's well. And that makes the teaching even more difficult. Anyway, so... <laughs> So, so from Sister Moya's class, who can tell us what you learned? And the person I will call knows himself, Prosper. Amen. Amen. <laughs> He's been looking at me. He's been praying. I know. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I just want to talk about King Riaza, Riaza. Uzziah. Uzziah, sorry. Uh, Riza, not Ariza. King Uzziah. <laughs> Uzziah. Okay. King, king Uzziah of Israel. He was the king. He's Judah. He's king of Uzziah of Judah. 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 Um, king Uzziah of Judah. Okay, he was the king in Judah. And he was a powerful man. God grants him power. But. Even now he, he has power, but later he disobeyed God by doing what is not right. He went to the temple of God to burn incense. He do what is not right. And he don't have the right, as he don't have the access to do that thing that he did. So the pride, the press in that place stopped him not to do it, but he refused. He go ahead and do it. But let, later, God punish him by sending disease to him. So I learned that it's not good. Even when God puts you as a king or when God gives you power, do not disobey God. If you obey God, rules and regulations. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. From bro, for last class. Now, teachers are not talking today. I want... Uh, you will talk, sir. I'm not, let them, first of all, <laughs> let's see your students, sir. <laughs> From, from no no ah, I won't lie lie that, no 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 she's not, she's more of an assistant teacher than a student. Brotolu. Yes sir. Thank you sir. You were nominated. I wasn't what I called you. You were nominated. <laughs> close to God. He had followed God's word and everything. But then there came pride. Maybe due to over familiarity or he felt that hey, me and God we be guys. That kind of, <laughs> that kind of movement. So he, that's why he, he now normally there are protocols to everything. Yes. God put in place to do this. If you want to do this offense, to do the sacrifice. God didn't put you because you are my good son. Number one thing I learned there was do not let um, 
familiarity, break your relationship with God, then he approaches us to do what? His hierarchy to things in heaven. His hierarchy to things in the world generally. So do not break hierarchy. Guys. Thank you so, so much. I like the guy. Me and God, we are guys. Be careful. <laughs> God, not be your guy. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. From um, Sister Lola's class. Yes, I'm not in the class for today. I wasn't in the class. Who is going to speak? Emmanuel. Where is Emmanuel? What's he doing there? <laughs> Go on. We won't. So, Brofala, he will still talk. Yes. Go and look for him. Brofala, you want to say something, sir? Okay, I have some things to say. No problem, sir. Yeah, from that same Isaiah. He became king at age 16. I asked the youngest person in my class his age. I said, you are more than Uzziah. <laughs> <laughs> so that don't look down on yourself to be too young to rule. Like our president, ex-president said, President Buhari, ex-president Buhari said, not too young to rule. So that uh, don't look down on yourself that I'm just a child. But in the time of Uzziah, he became king at age 16. And thank God for the support of Luis Zachariah that was with him. Yes, Zachariah taught him to fear God. And one thing I also learned from that account, that account is that for all those kings who followed in the step of the Lord, who uh, obeyed God, they, are, they, they enjoy peace and they live longer. For him, I think he ruled for 52 years as a king compared to other, ki other kings that, uh, that were worshipping idol, that were not considered God's way. Their kingdom did not last. But for people, the kings who chooses to follow God's way, they enjoy peace, they live longer, and it's a, it's, a, it's a good lesson for us. And if we should look around us, the same thing is happening. For friends that we have, those that we don't consider God, you can see from their life that they are not really, uh, you cannot really say good thing about them. But for people who choose to follow God, you can see growth, you can see progress. So that is to tell us that it's based to Stay with God. It's, it pays to worship God. It's, it pays to serve God. That being said, I also learned from Isaiah. You know, Isaiah gave prophecies over Israel, describing them as being disobedient. They are quick to forget about God anytime they are relaxed. When things are rosy for them, they are quick to turn away from God to uh, follow and start worshiping idols. So that reminds me that some people in our days too, when they feel relaxed and comfortable, they quick, they, some forget about God. They feel, I'm powerful, I have all I need, my food, my needs are met, I don't need God. That brings me to the question that some people in African churches, people why some churches are so full in Africa, some are not because they love God, because of problems, because of the lack of job, lack of, they are praying for their enemy to die. You know, all those problems are what pushes them to come to church, not because they really want to serve God. And a little time, some, when their needs are met, you will not find them in church anymore. So why do we serve God? Why do we come to church? Is it because of our needs to be met? So that tells me that it is beyond needs. It should be a relationship with God that you want to grow in your knowledge of God, come to serve. You know, when we come together, we are better, we are stronger. You know, when I'm discouraged or something, somebody in the church can encourage me. Somebody can guide me, oh, that you are doing is not right. You know, but if I'm, if I'm by myself, nobody, I, I won't see anybody to come and say hi to me. 
Maybe no wonder in those Western world they are always by themselves. They don't have friends. Nobody comes to check on them. So I'm just stressing this point that why we come to church is to serve God. To serve God. It's also in the scripture that don't neglect the gathering of brethren. Don't be comfortable with yourself. Only you cannot be church. You are not, only one person cannot be church. And church is not the building. It is we that come together that makes a church. Okay, another point. Pastor Fola. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, sir. Uh, maybe, I, 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 please, I crave your indulgence. My neighbor. Don't be annoying, sir. <laughs> Brother Fola, please. Eh? Thank you. Who else wants to? Please, let's come here if you want to talk. Rajafia, please let's be concise, please. Our time is Praise really the Lord. fast me. Yeah, while studying. <laughs> it's because of the video, actually. Oh, all right, okay, thank you. Yes, sir. So, uh, because of the video, thank you, sir. While, yeah, am I okay here? Okay. Okay, okay I should stay here. Okay. All right. So, sorry. Uh, while studying, uh, the book of Isaiah, I saw, I saw light, and it's actually un, unusual. Uh, two things played out there. Isaiah was actually the one prophesying. And uh, if we are not very careful, we will look at it that the, the, the object or the focus is about the scene of the people. It's about the... Um, uh, how they dwell into idolatry and the race of that. But I see a star in that, in that text, which is the, the love of God, the compassion of Jesus, the, the plan of redemption of his people. Because in the book of, uh, in, 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 in chapter 12 and 13, you see where he's talking about the branch from the root of Jesse, uh, an excellent, uh, the full of wisdom. It's talking about Christ. Now, the, 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 the light that I saw is I saw the plan of salvation even in the midst of the darkness of the people that dwell therein. And, and, and again, the application of that is many a times we may look at maybe what we do or what we find ourselves in or um, uh, uh, like in the case of Nigeria, when we look at as if it is doom and all of that, and if we did not see what God is saying concerning the redemption of it, we may dwell in it, and at the end of the day, we may uh, be demoralized, we may not even, would. Some, some people will even say, okay, let's keep on doing what we are doing, after all, nothing is going to happen. Then, Isaiah himself, being the one that started prophesying, it got to a point that light also comes to him where he see another dimension. Uh, so two things, yet we can be light in the nation of Nigeria, but that is not enough. That we should crave for more, that we will see beyond what we are saying, what we are doing now, but more light from God that will bring a higher illumination to the country. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Any other contribution, please? Hello? One to seven. To care about what is away as captives. Suddenly, all your parties will end. In the midst of all of those things, you know, those people that God was talking, just me and my wife, as in when it comes to, we can get to that place where you feel so confident in yourself. You so, so what she said is very, very poor guy. Very poor guy. That was good and prophesying. And there are some things that must be done first. If you've done those things, yeah, and other. Okay, I want ah, to. Okay. Okay, I want ah, to. Okay. <laughs> okay, I want to come. For him to have seen God, for him to have seen God, he thought he would die for like, the people of Israel. That all these offerings, sacrifices, burnt offerings, all these offerings, sacrifices, burnt offerings, God does, is not man. It's because of. Men in Israel are died. We should four and uh, five verses rather before and uh, about five four and uh, five verses rather before and uh, about five or six verses below. 
or probably the whole chapter so that you can understand the context in which God is talking and it will give you better understanding. Because if you just, you, you, can't, you can't build a doctrine on just a verse, as it were. You can, but you need to be very, very careful or else you can really go out of way, like he said. Yeah, some people still feel they are, there was one man of God that I had, I think in a woman shop, that said he's, he's the second Solomon and that God has permitted him to marry as many wives <laughs> as he could. Yes, and I think it was, as last time I had him was on, is it sixth or seventh wife? So he still had a long wait catching up with Solomon. So, <laughs> so praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, um, Emmanuel, next week you will be the first to speak. Time has gone now. So, please. And um, one thing I want us to also understand is, uh, oh, bro, fire. How many seconds should we have now? Just a few seconds. Okay. Just, few seconds. Yeah, yeah, the want, time starts now. I just want to um, say this concerning what we've been reading. And um, I, for me, I'm trying to like follow the story, getting the context, of, uh, and also relating it to what is happening right now. You know? And um, I look at it that in every generation, God raises people. You know, and... Um, God uh, has purpose for his children. He, he, has, he has what he has determined, and he, he has what he wants them to do at every particular point in time. If you look at the story of all the kings in Judah, in Israel, there are prophets that, you know, that speaks to them. And they also, they were actually involved. They saw it. They saw them speaking. You know, Isaiah, Amos, Obadiah, a lot of them like that that were that mentioned. They spoke a lot. And these kings were actually seeing it. Just the way we are right now. We have presidents all over in different countries. We have, we have ministers. We have a lot of leaders in every uh, faces. Uh, political leaders. We have uh, even spiritual leaders in churches and all, all these things. So God raises people. And it is, it's, it's actually meant for us to understand what is going on at every point. And what God is saying at that point. If we don't really understand it, we might not know how we can uh, take hold of the advantage of what God is saying and what God wants us to do at that particular point. If God is telling you, this is what I want you to do, how are you actually uh, working towards achieving those things? You know, I read the, 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 the account of Uzziah, and the Bible says, in, in the days of Ezekiah, you know, as I sought the Lord, and as he was seeking the Lord, what was happening to him? He was succeeding as a king. He was already making inventions. Like, he can innovate. He can think of what is going to happen in the next 50 years. He can think of the machines like to design. He was designing machines that can be used in the war. And it's because he was seeking the Lord, the Lord at that point. You know, and God was making him to succeed. So I now look at it that if I'm a leader in, 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 my, in my organization, or, or I'm a leader in the church, I'm actually seeking God for me to be innovative in what I'm doing, in thinking ahead. I'm actually doing this for, for, for me to actually fulfill God's purpose. So it's, a, it's, it's actually a call for us that at every point, God raises people. And you should be conscious of what God is doing at that point and work towards it to fulfill what God um, wants you to do. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I think one thing there is um, we should not allow stomach infrastructure to compromise us when we get to deliver what God wants us to do. Sir? Stomach infrastructure. <laughs> okay. What I'm saying is, um, um, if you read, like he said, the kings and the prophets, we have different categories of prophets. We have false prophets. And one of the, uh, from what I've read, one of the indicators of a false prophet is a compromised prophet. They only speak things that the king wants to hear. What the king will be happy with, whether God said it or not, is just the king must be happy. The king must be, because as long as the king is happy, he's secured in terms of his wealth, his land, and, and whatever things, and the stomach Figuratively, it's also fine. His children, he has choice lands. You understand? It's fine. 
everything about him is secured. But he knows that the day he begins to speak the truth, the king will be against him. And we can see that, this, I mean to go back a little to the story of Micaiah and Ahab. The other prophets were in the palace, prophesying. They, were in, they, they, they called them courtiers, as in they were in the court, king's court. But where was Micaiah? He was in the dungeon. We need to be careful. You understand? We should not allow um, fleshly gain to deter us from saying the truth as God wants us to say. Some of us, we've had God truly, but we treat hey, that thing. Ah, no, I can't say this. God, there must be a way to go about it. And you probably change one or two words that change the whole context of what you are supposed to say. So those are the things we need to, we need, we must learn to stand with God regardless of what happens. And um, sometimes God will say, I will deliver you. And when you are reading about the prophets, he says, God, I'm sorry, sir, is this deliverance? You understand? God says, go and talk, I will deliver you. And you went to talk, they throw you in the dungeon. You ask yourself, sir, your deliverance seems to be different from my own concept of deliverance. I thought when I speak it, and someone there will be fire from everyone. You will deliver. But I'm in dungeon. I'm, I'm not feeling fine. I'm not enjoying it. You understand? I think some of it's very important for us to understand that. We must ask God, how do you want me to say it? What wisdom do you want me to speak with? Because sometimes God can give you wisdom. Just like Samuel. said, Saul will kill me. He will say, don't worry. Just behave as if you are going to make a sacrifice. There are wisdom. God can okay, say, don't worry. Just go and say it directly. Or... Do it this way. Do you cannot preempt God on what how He will tell you to deliver. You can ask God, Father. I say, well, this way you want me to say it. Can you help me? Even in New Testament, it happened when God sent uh, what's the name of this brother again? This this cool brother to Paul. Uh, Ananias. He said, God, you know Paulo. This guy is a murderer. Are you not sending me? I'm just paraphrasing. Are you not sending me on the mother, <laughs> on on the suicide mission? God said, "Okay, don't worry, just go. I'll be with you." And and he had to go. You understand? God is not saying you cannot talk to him if you are afraid, but don't compromise. All of God's prophet, even the mighty um, prophet of fire, ran. The fire died out at some point, and he ran. So it's not it's not wrong for you to be afraid, but know who to run to when you are afraid, for strength to do what is right. I pray the Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, we thank you. We worship your holy name as we've learned at your feet today. We pray that your word will come and heal us and guide us and will be a light unto our path and a lamp unto our feet. So guide us in your path of life in Jesus' name. As we continue to the service, we pray you take absolute control and we just be a channel to deliver what you have for us this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. And we'll be beneficiaries of all that you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah.